Reading to you this morning from the Authorized Version of the Scriptures. If you happen to have a copy of the Authorized Version of the Scriptures, please go ahead and locate it, grab it, pick it up, and open it. And please read along with me at the Scriptures we're going to be looking at today. Please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the Scriptures we will be reading today. Okay? Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. When it comes to something about context and you're unsure of it, you know what you do? Pause the video and read it on your own, okay? Read along with me. Make sure I'm telling you the truth and make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Read along with me because my mouth sometimes will go quicker than my brain, okay? So please, read along with me in the scriptures we're going to be looking at. Reading to begin from Second Peter. You might be, I mean, I'll, I haven't found a, a thumbnail, but um, from murderer to messenger. We're going to be talking about our apostle, the apostle of the Gentiles, who also was a minister unto the Jews as well, but to to us Gentiles first. Our brother. I'm going to be talking about our brother Paul today. You might be like, well, why are we in Peter? 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 on to the close. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. One of these days, Lord willing, do a video showing the difference between patience and long suffering. Okay? Long suffering general, generally, usually, is equated unto the Lord. Long suffering with lost people. Okay? Patience. Uh, he shows more towards us, his body, the church, and living God, the saints, okay? Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, Speaking, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. W-R-E-S-T. Wrestle. As they do also the other scriptures onto their own destruction. Unstable. Unstable. While we're here, why don't we go to James real quick, shall we? James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, fear of the Lord, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But, but, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It's interesting when we consider Paul the Apostle of just how many people, especially these Christians, actually have quite a problem with the Apostle Paul. Uh, the, the little girl stupid head that has been rebuked, um, she has a problem with Paul because she's a feminist and she was never a saint, never saved in the first place. She's got a problem with God because of what God wrote through Paul. And hence she uses Paul as the focal point. And she, she hates Paul. She hates God because what God said through Paul as concerning women. 
There's also another channel out there which is called Trusting JC, who's a work salvationist trying to tell you that you got to keep the law. He is one of those who called Paul a, fra a false prophet. And I think even, if I remember correctly, uh, the fledgling of pride even once did a video uh, rebuking that trusting JC guy. He called Paul a false prophet and said that he was against Christ and, you know, uh, was teaching people contrary to the law. Oh, where do we read about that in? Huh? <laughs> But see, he was one who wanted to bring people under the law, okay? He wanted to go about to establish his own righteousness. Mark the messenger. You know, he tells you that you got to keep the commandments today, all right? He has a problem with Paul. He does. He would never, of course. You know, they, they profess that they love God, you know, but in their hearts they go after their, wicked, after their covetousness and stuff like that. He would never say that, but I don't have a problem with Paul. But yet, you teach people that they got to keep the commandments. You teach contrary to eternal security. You don't believe in the redemption of the purchase possession. Okay, the free grace, easy believe is a heretic. They have a problem with Paul. The Brad, Brad, come on! Ain't none of these uh, free grace. Um, uh, easy believism, devils, rightly divide the word of truth. Not one of them. Oh, we're dispensational, but, but, but wait, 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 wait. Time out, okay? It's, from gra it's by grace through faith from Genesis on to Revelation, right? That's what all of you believe. You do not rightly divide the word of truth. Hence, you guys have a problem with Paul too. Hmm. You do. You do. Because you don't rightly divide the word of truth. And all these people that have this problem with Paul the Apostle, all of them, don't rightly divide the word of truth. See, that's imperative. That's imperative. Okay? You're, you're a babe out there, or the Lord is guiding you onto himself, you got to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is written for you. It's not all written to you. Okay, you got to remember that. But let's let's finish up here in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Save people fall. False converts fall away. And that is what we are seeing in abundance nowadays. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. We looked at this specifically in Peter because Peter called Paul a beloved brother. And if Paul was considered by the apostles as that trusting J.C. guy uh, um, accused or alleged and others have said about Paul that he was a false apostle, uh, that, that little stupid head, she even was saying that Paul was a false prophet and whatnot. Uh, Mark the messenger, he doesn't outright say that, but in what he teaches, he does. The free grace, easy believism, <laughs> devils, okay? They would, we don't have a problem. Yes, you do. You don't rightly divide the word of truth, okay? You don't. You don't. Yes, I do. You say, all of you do, that it's by grace through faith, from the beginning, Genesis, unto the end, Revelation. That's a lie. We've covered that. Okay? We have covered that. We have covered that. You have a problem with Paul. The false always seem to have a problem with Paul. And hence, because Paul, who was a murderer, made into a messenger. You have a problem with God. 
Paul never put himself on the level of God. God forbid. No, but he was a messenger. He was a murderer who went to be a messenger. Called. Okay? So, now, quite simply, if you want to, if you personally, whoever you are, you want to know about Paul, here's what you do. Begin in the book of Romans and read unto Philemon. Okay? Go ahead. Start in Romans. Start in Romans. You lost people, remember, the book of Romans is about you personally. Yes, you. 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 Yes, it's about you personally. Yeah, especially the first three chapters is about you personally. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's examine a little bit. Dear Paul, we are going to be primarily in Acts chapter 9 with some expository things going on here. Uh, we have talked about this before, but not really concentrated just, just on Paul himself. Okay? All right? Acts chapter 9. We are inevitably going to read from verses 10 on to verse 31. But we're going to break this up into pieces, okay? Uh, if you got if you got one of these things, this might be helpful for you to use, okay? Most of you saints are aware of this, but we need to also keep this in mind about our dear Paul, who was a murderer and went on to be a messenger. And this is something, too, that I want to uh, state at the beginning of this video. There are sometimes, and the further we go, hope for this is being diminished, but I always like to kind of hope that one of these wicked devils, one of them, might actually turn and actually get saved. You look at the devils who do all these attack videos. That's all they do. You are so inept, you can't even teach or preach anything yourself out of the scriptures. you got to have someone else do it and you boast his work because you are inept. The only thing that you can do is throw stones and fling dung. That's all you can do. Okay? What would happen if one of these people got saved? I know it's a, it's a fleeting thought, especially at the level of falling away that we are seeing today. I understand that, brethren. Some of the brethren would even, uh, would like uh, our dearly beloved brother, um, he was like, Brad, come on, I, I, I know you're being a little too bit optimistic there. And I'll give you that. But, you know, remember... You know, Alberto Rivera, you know, a lot of people don't think he was saved. I do. He just was so ingrained in some of that Catholicism that he didn't, wasn't able to part with all of it. But see, the Lord used him to expose the Jesuit order. Okay? We have heard of many a tale of people who once were contrary to God, but yet the Lord got a hold of them and broke them. Broke them of their self-righteousness. And they feared him. They took responsibility and feared him. Called upon the name of the Lord and he saved them. And took who was once a murderer and made him into a messenger. Okay? There are several of these devils that I am personally aware of. I don't pray for that for them anymore. I just pray for that, that the Lord's will be done upon them. Okay, the, you know, because most of these guys, a majority of them, the ones who are doing the teaching, have made their choice and are openly acknowledging that they are serving Satan by teaching contrary to the scriptures, rightly divided. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. They are of their father, the devil, and the lust of their father, they will do. When they speak a lie, they speak of their own. You can't, you can't teach. You can't do anything because you're not saved. you got to have someone else and put their stuff up there. But you yourself, you can't do it. All you can do is attack. What would happen if one of these people 
The Lord actually broke them. He can do that. Nothing is impossible with God. But see, he's not going to force it upon these people. He's not going to force it. No. What would happen if these people actually, actually got saved? To this day, now, I doubt this is going to happen. Because the inquisitor from New York, you know, Elmer Fudd, he's, unfortunately for him, he has cancer. Um, and in the light of all that, that guy, he... <laughs> the probability of that guy actually getting saved, not going to happen, I don't think. Not at all. Not at all. And he's not saved. But what would happen if that guy actually did get saved? I believe that guy who I'm talking about, most of you, some of you know who I'm talking about. If you don't, that's great. But I believe he's a Jesuit. I really do. Okay, the guy from New York, the Inquisitor from New York. Okay, I've se I say that because I've seen some of his comments before. But um, if he got saved, truly got saved, what an enemy he could be to the Vatican. What an enemy he could be to the Vatican. What, what an encouragement he could be to the brethren, to people. It's like, okay, that guy has been preaching a false gospel for as long as he's been around. And now all of a sudden he's coming out against Jesuits saying that you need to be broken of your self-righteousness. Okay? <laughs> all right? <laughs> okay? Taking accountability, fearing the Lord and calling upon his name. Wow! Wow! I mean, seriously. I mean, wow! If that man got saved, Turned on the Vatican whom he serves? I, I don't know if he would live that long because of betraying the Vatican in such a way, especially since they are probably the ones that are providing for his uh, welfare. Wow. If he got really saved, I would endorse him. I would. If he truly got saved, I would endorse him. Just like several of, um, several of the enemies of our Lord. And even my most <laughs> deadliest enemy, who I said I'm not going to mention because that's what he wants, but if that man actually got saved, actually, for real, got saved, wow. Wow. But then again, like I said, these are fleeting thoughts <laughs> because it's not by force. And a majority of these guys have chosen their way and are serving Satan, i.e. the Vatican. But what if? What if? I've asked that before in a video a long time ago about uh, an individual who I actually do respect even though he's my enemy and I'm his. We don't like each other. He's going to hell. He thinks I'm going to hell. Okay? We're, we are enemies. But I, I respect him nonetheless. I do. I do. A guy like that could, would really get saved. I would be, I would endorse him. But see, again, this is going on the impossible as possible with God. But there are some things we got to remember about Paul. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. We're going to now, every, most everybody is aware of the Damascus Road with Paul. Okay, we're not going to read verses 1 on to verse 9. Here's where you pause the video, okay? Pause the video. Get me in an uncompromising facial expression at the moment, okay? But pause the video and you read verses 1 on to verse 9, okay? Most people are aware of the Damascus Road thing. Even a little stupid head is, okay? So we're not going to cover that. We're going to cover after this. Let's read verses 10 on to verse 16. All right. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. You know, if the Lord calls you, how many of you, by the way, are like, I'm here. I'm here, Lord. I know there's this one uh, lovely brother who... Um, uh, 
got a hold of uh, via email yesterday. He's like looking for his purpose. There's a brother when the Lord's like, brother, I, I'm not going to say his name because he hasn't given me permission. I'm not going to do that. But he's like, hey, hey, that brother would be like, I'm here, Lord. My dear young, dear sweet young brother from Croatia. The Lord calls him. He's like, I'm here, Lord. The Lord's like, yeah, you've been made ready. <laughs> Whenever the Lord calls him to, you know, to do whatever the Lord will have him to do. But how many of you, when the Lord calls, put you, you know, for example, I fought the Lord in doing this for years. Years. Okay? You know, I was not forced to this position. Not at all. Not at all. What happened was... The Lord took every option away. <laughs> took the house away. Took the job away. Took the money away. Took everything away. To where it's like, well, you don't have to. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, but it was like he took away all other options. <laughs> you know. How many of us, how many of you, saints, when the Lord calls, I am here. Well, I'm not eloquent. I'm not. Let's continue. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. We'll get more to this in a minute. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And see, one of the guises that an infiltrator will use is a false conversion. You have to watch out for that. You have to watch out. Lay your hands on no man suddenly. Okay? <laughs> Here. Ow. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yeah, you saw it, okay? But you got to remember, infiltrators, people wanting to get in just to cause damage, just to cause contention and strife, try to separate brethren, and cause problems, okay? They will do that. They will do that. They will go in under the guise of a false conversion. Let's continue. Let's read verse 13 again. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. See, in the book of Romans, it's he says to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay. Paul is the apostle unto the Gentile, as Peter is the apostle unto the circumcision, the Jew. But Paul here, right here, the Lord Himself to the to, to us Gentiles is you know he's the apostle to the Gentiles. But Paul was also to be a witness unto the children of Israel. So see, yes, Paul is the apostle of the Gentile, but his example that he gives in the Pauline epistles, which Peter addresses, is for all the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. Okay, you gotta remember that. You gotta re yes, yes, Paul is our apostle of the Gentiles. But also his example was also an example unto his brethren, the Hebraic Jewish people. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Okay? Verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias said, I have heard of, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Like what? Well, let's read Acts chapter 8, verses 1 and verse 4. The stoning of Stephen. 
They laid all their garments at the feet of Saul, okay, who would become Paul. The name change denoting the creature, okay? Kind of like with Jacob, okay? And Saul was consenting unto his death, uh, Stephen's. And at that time, there was a great persecu persecution against the Christians. <laughs> you reading along with me? <laughs> and at that time, there was a great persecution, persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And of course, when you read this, um, it is surmised, and I believe it too, unless the Lord allowed a persecution to come, everybody would have just hunkered down and stayed there. And the Lord's like, <laughs> unlike what little Miss Stupid Head didn't want to believe, uh, the Lord said in uh, Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 19 on to verse 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, Teach, you little young stupid head. Um, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of singular. The name of, one name, given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyway, teaching them. To observe all things whatsoever, I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Okay? All right? <laughs> so the Lord's like, don't just stay there. Yeah, you, they were to stay for the promise of the Holy Ghost, the Lord himself, that seal until the day of redemption. Absolutely. But it's like, go, go, come on, go, get out of here. Go, 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 Okay? They would have probably have just stayed there waiting. The Lord's like, no, go. Go? Okay. I'm going to send some, uh, I'm going to allow somebody to, you know, light a fire under your butt. So, verse 2. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. Entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison, where eventually some of them were killed. Hence, and people will argue, well, Paul himself didn't actually kill someone. No, you're right. However, he gave them over to be killed. Kind of like what the Jews did with their Lord, right? Yeah. Like so many of these devils will use the devil's system to attack. Yeah. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. And verse 4 is imperative that scattered, go, get out, go, preach the word, where they were all going to probably stay hunkered down. Okay? Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verses 4 on to verse 11. Paul went after the church, the saints. Okay? Paul attacked the church. The thing about Paul is, you got to remember, Paul wanted the Lord. He wanted God. He believed in God. He thought what he was doing was the right way. Okay? Acts chapter 26, verses 4 and verse 11. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. They, you know, among Jewry, especially at this time, Pharisee. There were the Sadducees, you know, which were kind of more liberal. But the Pharisees, they were the, you know, today the Hasidim and all the divisions of the Hasidic Jew are descended of the Pharisee. Okay, the Hasidim. All right? You can look them up, you know, go ahead. But the straightest of sect 
of our religion. I live the Pharisee. And you read Mark chapter 7 about how they, uh, they, you know, they wanted to keep their own tradition over, over the commandments of God. Okay? So Paul, he, he was devout. He believed in his heart. What he was doing was the right way. Why? Because he wanted God. See, what you believe determines how you behave. Your behavior is determined by your belief. Paul thought, believed, without a doubt, until that what he was doing was the right way. And that those of this way, the church, were the heretics. Okay? Let's read. And now I stand, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night. Hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. See, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were hoping for the Mashiach to come. But see, what they weren't looking for was the lamb. They were looking for the lion. But he came first as the lamb. See, the Hebraic people in their synagogue, I've witnessed this, they avoid Isaiah 53. They do. And if they do touch on it, they mean it in a collective sense that it is Jewry, not Jesus Christ. Okay? Jewry was looking for the son of David. Amen, he came! But that son of David, Jesus Christ our Father, he came first as the Lamb. Remember Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. God shall provide himself, himself a Lamb for a burnt offering. Okay? All right? He came first as the Lamb. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the majority of Jewry were looking for the sword wheeling wielding king of David to militarily get Rome out of there. Okay? That's what they were looking for at the first. That's why they didn't accept him. Because he first came as the lamb to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross for the remission of sins. Okay? Alright? So in verse 7... When Paul says, unto which promise are twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. They were hoping for the Mashiach. But Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. They didn't accept him. Why? Because they were looking for the lion. And the lion is going to come at the second coming. Okay? But he came first as the lamb. Under the law. Uh, hold your place. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 5. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Okay? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And how did he redeem them that were under the law? By fulfilling the law as far as the blood sacrifice was concerned. It was finished. He paid the penalty for sin. Okay? He came first as the lamb. But like I said, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they weren't looking for the lamb. They were looking for the lion. The lion's coming back at his second coming. Okay? All right? So what Paul says there is not incorrect. But they were just looking for something else. Rather than Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So. Why should it be thought? Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you 
that God should raise the dead. And that's the problem with virtually all these false converts and these devils. Not all the devils, because they serve Satan and they know that, you know, Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead and that kind of thing. They know it. They know it. Okay? Okay, but most of these Christians that you talk to, uh, when you narrow them down to it, they don't believe in, a, in the resurrected Christ. They don't at all. And they certainly don't live like it. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Because Paul believed what he was doing was the right way. Paul was zealous. God, Paul wanted God. Paul wanted to be right with God. Paul wanted the Lord. Paul wanted to serve the Lord. But he was going about it the entirely wrong way. See, and we're not going to touch on this in this video, but the part two of this video we will touch on. These uh, devil coadjutors, these false converts, they want to justify themselves. They want to live for themselves. They don't want to live for God. They're about them. So they go to God that God may enhance them rather than being broken of themselves that they might be a vessel meet for his use and you see this within all these virtually all of these free grace easy believism devils it's all about them and their belief okay you also see this with the people like you know that little stupid that she doesn't count in this conversation that channel trusting jc uh, Mark the messenger. Though these guys want not the law to be finished, to be fulfilled. Why? So they can go about to establish their own righteousness. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, okay? But see, Paul wanted God. He wanted God. He wanted God. He wanted to be right with God. He wanted to serve God. It shows us right there. Verse 10, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. He didn't hold the knife, but he was the, the one around. Go for it, go for it. Hence, being a partaker with their evil deeds. When thou sawest a thief, thou consentest with him? Uh, I, I believe the term is guilt by association. Paul was a murderer. He put saints in prison to where they were killed. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad. Now, mad does not mean anger. Mad means woo -hoo -hoo, crazy. Okay? And no, Paul wasn't out of his mind crazy, but he was mad for what? Mad against them. Like the enemies of our Lord who hate us. They're mad against us. We're going to cover this in another video. But, you know, you see about... How they I got to bring this up for an example. His Holiness, when he did his little hiatus from lovely YouTube, okay? All right, this is an example. What happened? His enemies followed him to that other site. They followed him, okay? I'm just using that as an example. That's what devils do. They will follow, okay? They can't leave well enough alone, but they will go after, just like what Paul did. Okay? And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Like I said, we're going to talk about that in another video. Okay? But just wanted to address that. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 14. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure 
I persecuted the Christians. The church of God. Thank you. And wasted it. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Again, it is surmised that Paul was on that route to become the high priest. I believe that. I believe that. Paul himself does not bluntly say at all that it was my goal to become the high priest. But it is heavily kind of suggested that that was an area where Paul could have gone on to. Okay? That he could have become the high priest. Because he was what? Zealous of the traditions of my fathers. And we made mention of this. Go to Mark chapter 7. Mark, or is it Mark chapter 8? No, it's Mark chapter 7. Excuse me. Okay. Mark chapter 7. Verses 6 on to verse 13. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now see, Paul on the other hand, he had a heart for God. I, he really did. Obviously. I believe he did. So do all the saints. Okay? He did. Unlike the rest. But yet still Paul was in that trap of what? Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. As the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. If you've ever been into a restaurant or kitchen where it's kosher and the, the rabbis are there, they say in the morning the blessing and whatnot, and they wash everything down with the salt water and whatnot. I've seen that in kosher kitchens. They do that even unto this day. Okay? And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother in his corbin, that is to say a gift, what, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Okay? Paul was what? Verse 14 in Galatians 1. And profited in the Jews' religion, above my, many my equals, in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Okay? See, Paul believed. He believed that what he was doing was right. At the first, he did. He did. Okay? He believed the way he was going was the right way. But see, also, Paul, in Philippians chapter 3, thank you, Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 and verse 6, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. You, you devils with your, I just believe. I know I'm saying, because I just believe. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. We just kind of got a hint of what the Pharisees were actually about. Concerning zeal. Persecuting the church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law. Blameless. Blameless. See, until the Lord appeared to Paul and broke him. He believed for, in order for a man to be right with God, this is what you had to do. What you believe determines how you behave. Your behavior is determined by what you believe. Hence, 
When you save yourself with your own belief, then you are your own standard. You can see this evident and obvious in all these streaming Christians, these free grace streaming Christians. You can see it in the way they behave. Okay? All the time. All the time. All right? Okay? But Paul truly believed before the Damascus Road. And you got to remember, Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews. And you got to remember, dear friends, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Paul got a sign from the Lord. The Lord himself appeared to him. He saw the Lord with his eyes. That's why he went blind for a while. Okay? And that blindness, I believe, was one of the things, the thorn in his flesh. Okay? But he saw the Lord. He heard the Lord. Okay? The others heard, but they didn't see. The Lord appeared to Paul. The Jews required a sign. Okay? He was in Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. The Jews required a sign. Okay? Paul believed here in his heart that what he was doing was right. He was convinced of it. And see, that zeal he had was persecuting the church, the church of God, the saints. But yet he believed truly until the breaking of Paul on the Damascus Road. Okay? A Jew, the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Today, the Hebraic people's sign unto them is seeing their God in us Gentiles. And I know from lots of experience, I beg your pardon, Jews who look at this Christianity that is especially here on YouTube, you know what they do? They turn it off. They don't want anything to do with it. Okay? Why do you think a lot of the Messianic Jews want nothing to do with anything called Christian. Well, number one, they rightly associate it to where it is, with the Crusaders with the cross on their tunics. Okay? All right? But see, when Jewry today, even saved brethren of the Hebraic people, see this Christianity today, and I've, I've got a lot of experience with this, they know what they're seeing is not the faith once delivered onto the saints. And see, the devils are also partly responsible for that, of course. Excuse me, mostly responsible because they, with all the satanic doctrine that comes from Vatican, they give to you people a faith that is not. Okay? Acts 22. Acts 22. Acts 22 verses 3 under verse 5. Acts 22 verses 3 under verse 5. I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city of Silcia, in Silcia, excuse me, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day talking about the, you know, this is when he gave his defense to the Jews. And incidentally, Acts 22 is after what? Acts 21, where Paul showed his pride problem and also had a moment where he compromised doing something which he knew he shouldn't do. And the Lord stepped in before an, an offering was made. And it's like, okay, I told you twice not to go. You went. All right? And now you're not only, not only did you do something I said for you you shouldn't do, but now you're compromising and about to do something for which I already paid a penalty for, meaning an offering. Okay? All right? So the Lord stepped in and got Paul out of that. All right? All right? Uh, Acts 21 uh, will be in the uh, description box for you as well to consider that. Because Paul... Paul had a pride problem. Paul, unlike some of these perfect, uh, uh, you know, um, creatures from England and whatnot, uh, you know, Paul had moments when he was a hypocrite. So did Peter. Okay? Yes, he did. 
But let's continue. Verse 4. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also, uh, where we are, verse 5, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And see, until that breaking of the Damascus road, Paul was going on convinced, sure, this is the way to God. This is what needs, what man needs to do to be right with God. And here is the sect of the Nazarenes doing contrary to this. Yeah, I heard of this Jesus, but who is he? I don't know him, right? So these guys are wrong. We have the law. This is what people got to do to be right. See, Paul thought he was doing right by God because he thought at first the people didn't know who God really was. Okay? He really believed what he was doing was the right way. He did. Because Paul had that heart for God. Okay? Where so many have a heart for themselves and want to use God as their crutch. See, Paul wanted that. Paul wanted that. And until there is a breaking in you of your self-righteousness, go back to Acts chapter 9. Notice this right here. Notice this right here. Verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And during that time that he was in that moment of prayer, he didn't eat or drink. He fasted. Everything that Paul thought that he was doing right came to a halt. You talk about breaking. These free graces, well, Paul went from unbelief to belief. Yes, but Paul was broken. Paul was broken because what he was doing he thought was the right way, but he was doing contrary to the Lord who finished it, fulfilled the law. Paul didn't know that at that time. Okay? Paul didn't know that at that time. And in those days, while he was fasting, either eating, neither eating or drinking, and couldn't see, can you imagine what kind of battle went on in that head of his? What kind of remorse? What kind of guilt? Okay? And see, and this is what the deadly free grace, easy believism heretic avoids. Guilt. Shame. Brokenness. Contrition. Fear of the Lord. That's what they avoid. And Paul went through all of that in one fell swoop. Because the Lord appeared to him. And what did the Lord say to him in verse 5? And he said unto him, Paul said unto the Lord, Who art thou? Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Ah. I am Jesus whom you persecute. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He needed a sign. He sure got it. It crushed him. Crushed him. Go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Verses 1 on verse 5. Romans chapter 9, verses 1 and verse 5. To justify their, her their heresy and devilment, uh, the easy believism, free grace devil will tell you that <laughs> Paul was writing in the book of Romans 9, 10, and 11 for the time of Jacob's trouble. That's a lie. Don't believe them. They're just doing that to justify themselves. Just like another devil tried to tell you that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul was also writing for the time of Jacob's trouble when he was writing doctrine for us today. Watch out for devils like that who seek to justify themselves by going contrary to Paul. 
Okay? But Romans chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 5. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul is saying that he would rather be a curse from Christ that others may be saved. Seeing the zeal that Paul had, um, and you saints, let you roll that around your head a little bit when it comes to you serving others rather than serving yourself. Could you, in a clean think about this? Could you, in a clean conscience, say, "I wish I were accursed, so my deadly enemy, deadliest enemy could be saved"? Meaning, sure, put me away that someone else might be saved. I know that there are brethren out there who would give you the shirt off their back in the rainstorm. I know several of them. But would, would you go that far? Would I? And these people who attack Paul. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Romans 10, verses 1 and verse 4. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Ooh. Paul didn't know until the Lord appeared to him. There are some of those people out there, brethren, that you and I will encounter who don't really know and the Lord will orchestrate something to where he wants us to witness unto some of these Christians, you know, to just believe, guys, and stuff like that, or, or a Catholic or a Lutheran or something like that, that church membership saves you or some nonsense like that, okay? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, his righteousness, and going, to about, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now the law of righteousness, he's talking about the law, of course. Of course. But, look at verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And for that, very simply, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians imputed righteousness which... False converts know nothing about. Verse 21, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? Go back to Romans. They seek what? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Their own righteousness. You've got to keep the commandments today. Or, I'm saved because I just believe. Their own righteousness. Their own righteousness. Every single solitary free gracer I have ever encountered, without an exception, when you get them to that point, I'm saved. Because I believe. Okay? And going about to establish their own righteousness. What are they lacking? Go back to Romans 9. By the way, Romans 9, verses 30 on to verse 33. And as, oh, what shall we say then? 
that the Gentiles which follow, follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to, to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And the free grace, are, I do believe in Jesus. Your faith is in your faith. And it's evident by everything you do, every single one of you. Your faith is not on the Lord. Your faith is in your faith. Just like the metaphysical mind science people, like the charismatics who would uh, name it and claim it, believe and receive, it's just another off branch of that. Your faith is not on the Lord. Your faith is in your faith. Your faith is in you, your belief, not upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Your belief, you're uttering some words your church membership, or whatever it is. You see? 1 Timothy chapter 1. Oh yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 12 on to verse 17. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Paul believed in God. He sure did. He didn't at the time, in, uh, before the Damascus Road, he didn't know who Jesus was. He had heard of him, but he didn't know him. Okay? Jesus is God the Father. But see, Paul thought what he was doing was the right way. For example, if I were deceived and believed that you needed to get dunked in water in order to be saved, uh, you would never hear the end of it. If I believed that you had to go to a church building in order to cement your salvation, you wouldn't hear the end of it. If I erroneously believed in the heretical doctrine of the free grace and easy believers and devils, you would never hear the end of it. What you believe determines how you, you behave. Your behavior is determined by what you believe. Thou believest there, there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe in trouble. What's the deciding factor? Hmm? Brokenness. Verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love with which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Personal accountability. Personal accountability. We've already heard it in his rundown. Personal accountability. He wasn't hiding under the umbrella. We're all sinners. He wasn't hiding under that. We are all sinners. Yes, we are. But see, personal accountability, which the free grace, easy believism devil avoids. Every single one of you do. You do. Okay? There's no death to self in the free grace gospel. There is none. It's all good. There's no death to self. There is no death to self. It's just believe and receive. There's no death to self. That's what makes it a false gospel. Okay? Half-truths are all are actually worse than right, flat-out lies. You know that? Rat poison is 95% good food. It's that 5% that'll kill you. Okay? Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, 
that in me first Jesus Christ might chew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. What would happen if one of these free gracers actually got saved? That zeal that they have for a false gospel, turn that on to the true gospel, to the true Lord? Wow. Some of these Catholics, wow, who go every other day because they believe that eating a cookie and drinking wine, that's how you receive Jesus. And that you got to go to a church building in order to, to, to even have the thought that you might be saved. When a Catholic gets away from the whore, Satan's church, wow! Hebrew. Hebrew. Zealous of the traditions of their fathers. And they actually get saved. That disposition in the Jew, there, that propensity in the Jew, especially for the things of the law, when they come and realize it is finished, and that keeping the law today is not a requirement to that, I've seen this. You know. You might think you're bold sometime, brother, sister. You ever see a Jew witness to other Jews? Have you ever seen a saved Jew witness onto lost Jews? You know what you do? You just sit back. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know? It's incredible. It's incredible. And see, and this is me personally, but what happened, man, if some of these guys actually got saved? And all that zeal that they have to defend themselves, to be as their father the devil, but to turn that to serve the true Lord? With that type of zeal, man? What saddens me sometimes is that the zeal that our enemies have to perpetuate the lie of Satan that type of zeal they have to serve their father the devil why isn't that zeal also in a lot of us saints? Why? Why? I get you afraid I get it I get it. I understand. But I do wish. I do pray. I do pray. I do pray that there are some of you brethren out there, even you sisters, has the Lord with some of you brethren, verse 10 in Acts 9, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I'm busy, Lord. I got something to do. Or, Lord, I, I'm not eloquent. Lord, I don't know as much as brother so and so. I don't have this, Lord. I... Behold, I am here, Lord. While we're here, verses 17 on verse 22. And Ananias went his way, and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, who appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight, forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? 
and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? You know, there are some of these devils who I would enjoy calling my brother. I really would. I really would. I'm thinking of the one guy in Canada especially. It's like, I would. I would. I really would. Uh, delight to be able to call him brother. I would. He's not. It's looking like, wow, this, this guy, he was, he was preaching that false stuff, and now he's, he's a saint of the church of the living God. It's like, hey, brethren, let's, let's get... Dude, that, 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 guy, that guy's made videos against you. I, th I know, I know, but he's one of us. He's saved now. I don't know, but hey... Hey, do you forget when someone took a chance on you? We don't like to think about that one, do we? About how a fellow saint took a chance on you. We don't like to remember that one, do we? Yeah. Yeah. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Go back now to Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 now on to verse 7. See how we did that? Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 7. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace. Verse 16. Verse 16 here. Okay? To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him in me among the brethren. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. That is in uh, Acts chapter 9 verse 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues. That he is the son of God. Okay. He saw the Lord. He saw the Lord. He was converted. He was broken of his self-righteousness. Absolutely. Oh absolutely. You know he, he prayeth. He didn't eat or drink. While he was blind for what, three days? You talk about brokenness. Everything that he did was doing, he was doing out of ignorance. I didn't know better, Lord. I thought this was the way. But then the Lord appeared to him and showed him the way, the truth, and the life himself. And his guilt. There are those out there, Paul never had any guilt about you you get off your high horse and if I did I would ask you to share what you smoking that was a, that's another one of those things that the enemy can bring up as a flash drive in front of you you know what I'm talking about those memories you're in prayer praying for a brother and from out of nowhere a thought from your past comes like what wait whoa whoa Lord which has Spiders, which has nothing to do with what you're praying about, but all of a sudden it comes out of nowhere, and it's like, wait a minute, what, what, what's, what's going on here? That very well could be a devil whispering to you. Very well could be. Very well could be. Okay, but like I said, verse 16 here, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the brethren. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. And we see that in Acts 9. After that, you know, after Ananias saw him and whatnot, he's like straightway, it's like, Jesus, he is the Son of God. Right away. Right away. Okay? Verse 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went unto Arabia and returned again to Damascus. So, Paul would eventually return and take some time. Says, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in, here in the next part. But Paul, then after this little moment where he straightway, he went and secluded himself. And he and the Lord, the Lord worked on Paul during that time. Go back to Acts chapter 9, okay? Acts chapter 9, again, where he says, And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. 
But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on the name of on this name in Jerusalem? And came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound on to the chief priests? Paul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Philippians chapter 3. Paul was converted. Paul was broken of his self-righteousness. He fell into the very trap that he talked about in Romans 9 and 10 about the law, keeping the law to establish his own righteousness. And when the Lord appeared to him in that three days, not eating, drinking, not being able to see, right? Right? Absolutely. You thought he was broken. He was broken. Okay? He was broken. All right? Brokenness is a requirement to the Lord saving you. And if you have not been broken of that, Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 11. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. Now, verse 7, he's talking about the law. That you don't keep the law today to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. Okay? you It's not a requirement for salvation. It is not. That's what he's talking about. And verse 8, I have suffered the loss of all things. Okay? Not only that, like, hey, I don't have to keep the law anymore. They settle this in Acts chapter 15. Okay? You can read that on your own time. Okay? Like that trusting JC guy and Mark the Messenger and many others want to bring you under the law. You don't have to keep the law today. It's not a requirement for salvation. It isn't. It isn't. Okay? Just be aware of that. Okay? Verse 9. And be found in him. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And see, my own righteousness which is of the law. And we've already read the account of how he was zealous of the law. Paul was self-righteous in the law. Hence, he needed to be broken of his self-righteousness. Yes, after the Lord saved him, he had a pride problem. You read about that in Acts chapter 21, okay? You do. But see, unto salvation, you thinking you're a good person, that you're self-righteous by what you do? You need to be broken. You can't be fixed until you're broken. And this is why I abhor the free grace movement. They go over all of that, brethren. And they call it works. They try to say brokenness, uh, repentance, contrition, prayer. Call it, they say those are works of the law. Paul was broken. And see, you who save yourself by your belief and avoid brokenness, you have a problem with Paul. You have a problem with God. You have a problem with Paul. Because Paul was broken. Any genuinely saved saint of the church of God came that way of brokenness. And he said, well, I didn't. Then you know what? You weren't ever broken. Then guess what? You need to examine yourself because I'm going to tell you. If you ain't been broken of your self-righteousness, you ain't have no contrition, you ain't got no fear of the Lord, you don't call on his name, you don't go the way that he's elected, the way of the cross, you ain't saved. You boot the door and climb up some other way. You're a thief and a robber, man. Woman. Okay? It's, it's that simple. Okay? Let's read 9 again. And be found in Him. In Him. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. 
We die daily, yet we live. Why? Why? Getting ahead of ourselves. Hold on. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. That's not meaning working towards it, like he's earning it. Not at all, okay? 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 18 on to verse 30. Can you handle this? Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. He was being compelled by people who kept questioning him whether or not Christ was in him. And it got to the point where Paul was like, okay, you keep pestering me about this. All right. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools who say in their heart there is no God gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. You see this with all these cre uh, these streaming free gracers. You see it abundantly. They're, they're, they're whores. It's, all, it's, a, it's a type of whoredom. They take everyone every which way but Sunday. They'll, they'll, be, they'll have a debate with somebody like a Muslim or something like that. Brad, you're, not saying, you're saying we shouldn't? I'm not saying you shouldn't talk to them. But in a public thing like that where you have an audience, where you're the star of the show, you egocentric saps. It's all about you. It's all about you looking good in front of an audience. You need an audience. Okay? You need an audience. Y'all do. It's, it's disgusting. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit, wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I can just see Paul. Oy vey! <laughs> Are they ministers of Christ? Oy vey! I speak like a fool! Notice, I speak foolishly. Okay? In verse 21, I speak foolishly. Verse 23, I speak as a fool. Boasting himself. Boasting yourself is likened unto foolishness. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. What do you think these streamers are doing when they belittle someone who opposes their stupidity? Hmm? And they call them cowards. You're a coward. Uh, yeah, you want me to get on enemy lines where you have the power, where you can get all these people? No. No, that ain't being cowards. No. They're the ones that need an audience. To every one of the streaming Christians that I have ever encountered, I have emails. You want to talk privately? No, you need an audience. And also you would, you do, and I know who does this, you know, talk about doxing, who records people's conversations. I know someone who does that. Yes, I do. Anyway, anyway. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. Oy vey! I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths off of the Jews five times. Received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often. In perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, i.e. Christians, in weariness, <laughs> and painfulness, and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside, beside those things that are without, 
that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Look across the page to chapter 12, <laughs> verses 9 on to 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, past tense, and gave, past tense, himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Again, Paul wished himself accursed that others might be saved. Like I said, I know brethren out there who will give you the shirt off their back. I know brethren out there who, if they have no food and you need it, if they had the means, they'd give that money to you so you can have food and they would suffer. I know brethren like that. Sweet beloved brethren like that. And these people call Paul a false, pro uh, a false prophet, a false apostle. The very thing that these uh, heretics who do not rightly divide the word of truth like to take away from the Sermon on the Mount as far as the instruction in righteousness is concerned, Paul lived that. Paul lived that. That instruction and in righteousness. Paul even mentioned that in um, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. In 1 Timothy chapter 6. Okay. <laughs> verse 3. On to verse 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent, consent not to the wholesome word. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. The doctrine according to godliness is for us today instruction in righteousness. Okay? Got to remember that. Rightly dividing the word of truth. He is proud. Knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds. And destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. And again, like we always say, gain, you think immediately of this. But gain to these devils, an audience. They like to be the star of the show. They need an audience in order to perform, don't they? Don't you? Don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Acts 9... 23 on to verse 31 now. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their lying, lying awake was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, now time elapsed. Okay, Some, a little time elapsed there. He is saved to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the disciples, uh, the apostles, excuse me, and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had Preach boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Someone vouched for Saul. 
Bar Barnabas did, the son of consolation. Mm -hmm. And see, that very thing that Barnabas did for Saul, he tried to do for Mark. And that contention because of that between that now Paul and Barnabas was so sharp that they split asunder. And he was with them coming in and going out of Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed with the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied because the man who was once a murderer became a messenger. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 24. Galatians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 24. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James the Lord brother, Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I, lie, God I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Socia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. Glorified God in me. What would happen if your deadliest enemy was suddenly actually saved? Could you glorify God in the fact that one of the greatest one of the greatest murderers became a messenger? Your brother or your sister? Or is your heart too hard? Think about that. I, I think about that from time to time. Even though I know the probability of such is, is not going to happen. But it's, it's something. It's like, wow, man. You know, what would happen if one of these guys actually got saved? Actually got saved. Wow. It's like, wow, Lord. You took a guy who I was sure going to hell. But you broke him. And the murderer became a messenger. Wow, huh? But there's a contrast here, see. This thing about the brokenness. Go to Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22. See how we did that? Oh no, we didn't go to, to that already, did we? That's the notes for the other video. Acts 22 verses 15 on to verse 22. Paul giving the rundown of his conversion unto the people, the Hebrews. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And why and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, washing away thy sins, comma, calling on the name of the Lord. A lot of people see baptism saves you. No, it doesn't. Any questions about water baptism, you water dogs, in the description box, uh, the, the video that has that devil uh, Robinson on it uh, about water baptism. Any questions about that? Watch that video, okay? Alright. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I am prison and beat in every synagogue, them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by, and consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart. 
for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Verse 22. And they gave him audience unto this word. They were like, that's not go to the Gentiles. And then lifted up their voice and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Hmm. Brokenness is a requirement for salvation. Do you know the difference between being broken and sorry? Okay? We have a video which will be in the description box for you. Uh, truly broken, or, or just sorry, or, or fear, or love. Okay, we got, there'll be several uh, links for you to consider for some of the stuff that we talked about. But here's the question. When everything that you believed, your behavior is determined by your belief. What you believe determines how you behave. Okay? Some can fake that, but with all these infiltrating devils and these false converts, um, you can... Some of them you've just barely got a scratch, but some of them you can t totally bring out the true self of them, that they're not saved. But see, here's the thing. What happens when everything like Paul your what you believed was right the way you were doing it was right he didn't know what happens when you are become aware of that and you are no longer in ignorance what do you do what do you do in Acts 2 like I said you you wicked charismatics you gotta be baptized and stuff like that watch the baptism video okay Acts 2 verse 37 Peter gave a rundown to him. Now when they heard the, this, they were pricked in their heart. A little prick comes uh, out a little blood. Just a little blood. Okay? Just a little prick, like a little pin prick. It's like, oh! A little blood comes out. Okay? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the brethren and to the rest of the apostles, excuse me, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What did Paul say in Acts chapter 9? Okay, or Saul, he was a Saul at that time. Verse 6, and he trembling, in Acts 9, verse 6, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. What shall we do? When you are broken, and this is, this is the dividing line. This is why when you get to Romans 5, you're going to know whether you're going to be dealing with some obstinate, stonewalling person, spirit's own body, or someone's like, what do I do? What do you do? Men and brethren, what shall we do? What do you do at that point? Do you inquire, Lord, what shall I do? Or do you do what Acts chapter 7? Acts chapter 7. Stephen, laying into the people, calling them stiff-necked, really got at them. What they do? Acts chapter 7, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut. Bleeding profusely, a cut. Cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. See the difference between ignorance and willful ignorance. Paul was ignorant. He didn't know better. He asked the Lord, what, what, do you, what do you want me to do? Someone who is genuinely wanting truth upon being broken, 
What do I do? I've seen this. I've been witness to it. The Lord has used me in those situations. What must I do? Now what? What, 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 what do I do? And also, what does it say there? They gnashed on him with their teeth. They're cut to the heart. It's like, you're a heretic. You're, you're teaching a lie. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm elect. I do good works. I had communion. Who are you? <laughs> like we just saw in Acts chapter 22. <laughs> Verse 22. And they gave him audience unto this word and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow! from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Verse 23, And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, they went nuts. They went nuts. See, Paul was going headlong. Sure, he was doing it the right way. And for the dispensation, that was, yes, but see, the death, burial, and resurrection happened. The blood shed on the cross. And then Paul was going, he was Saul then. Then he started doing that contrary to the Lord. Then the Lord got a hold of him. And the murderer was made a messenger. Why? Because everything that he thought he was doing the right way, he found out that's not how you do it today. And he was broken of it. And he inquired, what must I do? How many of you when you are confronted with the fact that, hey, guess what? All right? Guess what? You just believe without any brokenness, without any contrition, without any fear of the Lord, without crying out to Him? You just, lo di do di do oh, I believe and receive. Huh? What do you do when that is exposed to you as heresy? Nash, with your teeth? away with such a fellow like so many of them do why because it's their self-righteousness that they want to cling to so many can come to the foot of the cross and be like I'm sorry but I can do better than that I can do better give me another chance someone who is broken who's pricked at the heart Like, you know, on, the, on a concrete floor, snotting all over yourself, crying, can barely speak, you are so broken. There's nothing more I can do. What can I do, Lord? Forgive me, I repent. You died for me. You shed your blood on the cross. To Please forgive me, Lord. Save me, I can't. What can I do? What must I do? What can I do? That's the difference. That's the difference. And that mentality, whether they say, whether they've been pricked, what, what must I do? To verses, away with such a fellow, and Nash. When the Lord puts his finger on that one thing you lack, what you believe, determines how you behave. Your behavior is determined by what you believe. So to the free gracer, easy believism devil, are you your own God? Acts 20, verses 28 on to verse 35. We're almost done. This is the video that was supposed to be yesterday, but uh, never mind. Paul. You see, this is why Paul is the example for the church. He is the apostle of the Gentile, absolutely. But as we saw in Acts chapter 9, that also did encompass the Jew, because you read in the book of Acts, he went to the Jew first to the Gentile, but he was the apostle unto the Gentile. But see, his example of living after Christ as a saint 
His example is the one to be followed. Acts 20, verses 28 and verse 35. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. And like I told you, brethren, people, you've got to watch out for these free gracers. They're all about feeding themselves. They're all about feeding themselves. That's what they're about. It's about them because they saved themselves by their own belief. Okay? That's what they are about. Galatians chapter 6. Okay? Verses 12 on to verse 13. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves or who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Circumcision, talking about going under the law and stuff like that. Okay, Saving themselves by what they do. We already covered that. Okay, Go back to Acts chapter 20. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Oh, like di some Diotrephes, who like to have the preeminence, who this is all about them. They want to be the star of the show. It's theater. They need an audience. Therefore watch and remember. That by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye know, ye, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. And I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Paul acknowledged that he was going to get a crown, and he fought to strive, yes, but that was not his motivation. His motivation was seeing others delivered from the snare of Satan, that people might be saved. These Christians, people, are only concerned about making themselves look good and bringing people to hell with their father, the devil, with the church that they serve, Mystery Babylon the Great, Rome! They're self-serving. 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 14 and verse 19. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. See, you show love by telling people the truth. These Christians think love is not scaring them, not telling the sinner of his sin. Thank you, Gandhi or whatever. Okay, they call that, that's hate. I'm going to show you love by telling you, hey, you're going to fall off of a cliff. Stop! But the Christian, don't, don't say that. Look at them, they're so happy. Keep going, but he's going to, don't, don't. Don't disturb him. Don't scare him. Hey, maybe he'll find out himself. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walk we not in the same spirit? Walk we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we accuse ourselves unto you? 
We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things dearly beloved for your edifying. Edifying onto being separate to not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind, not being as the world. Not encouraging people to continue as a devil. That's the difference. And that is what Paul was about. See, Paul, Paul had a pride problem. Yes, he did. Paul sinned. Yes, he did. Acts chapter 21 and Romans chapter 7, people. Okay? But see, Christ was the all to Paul. Christ is the all unto us. And unto the false convert, their Christ, which is that man of sin, the son of perdition, i.e. Satan, it's all about them, how they may look good. We would rather spend and be spent that you may be edified. And that's what Paul was about. And again, I want, I want to leave you with that thought that Paul said in Romans chapter 9. Because this is something that I think about. Verse 3 in Romans 9. For I wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. We, we know, we know that apart, outside of Christ, you know, who, unto whom else shall we turn? But you think about that about Paul. The next time you run into one of these devils calling Paul a false apostle, a false prophet, all these people, not rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth is imperative. But you think about that. Let's examine ourselves on that. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Please continue to pray for one another. Get a hold of a brother. Get a hold of a sister today. Talk to them. If it's email, phone, Skype, whatever, pray for them. Pray for the brethren. As you are able, be there for them. Because sometimes, brethren, you know what? You just being there could, could be more than any amount that you could ever give them. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you. We will see you in the next video.